But that horror is six weeks away. Today, I'm supposed to get up on the auditorium stage and pretend to be a famous Californian. That's why I'm currently wearing a costume in the car as Mom drives me to school. Later today, I'll march onto the stage with the rest of my class and stand frozen until the spotlight, a gigantic flashlight wielded by my teacher, hits me. When it does, that's my signal to perform the speech I wrote and memorized. Solo, with the whole school watching. Everyone in my grade had to pick someone and participate. I chose Grandma Prisby, an old lady who built a village out of recycled garbage in the 70s before upcycling was cool. So I figured no one would care enough about my Californian to really pay attention to me. If you've ever sat crisscross applesauce through a school presentation, you know how much mind-wandering happens during the boring parts. My goal is to be so mind-numbingly dull that I'm practically invisible. My costume is a baggy sweater, old jeans, and a gray wig. Not exactly an attention-grabber. Grandma Prisby's actually pretty cool once you read about her, but I know I won't get the same oohs and ahs and head-snapping attention as Addie Lucas. She chose Mrs. Fields and got special permission to pass out homemade chocolate chip cookies. Mom turns into the school driveway and queues up behind a long row of cars. As Mom and I inch along in the car line, I rethink my original plan to survive this awful day. I thought I could handle it if I picked someone boring and forgettable. Cue Grandma Brisby. Now, I think I shouldn't even go. My stomach has been hurting since we left the house, and I'm practically positive I have a fever. I don't feel so well. I let my voice sound groggy and weak. Mom gives me the look of suspicion. We both have hazel eyes, but hers are lighter than mine because she's older and her pigmentation is flaking away. In very rare cases, this causes blindness. Mom assures me this is not happening to her. I hope she's right. You were fine five minutes ago. I wasn't. I didn't mention it because today is a big day. But I think I have a fever. Mom puts her hand on my forehead. Definitely not a fever. I imagine standing on stage while everyone stares at me and my stomach rolls. I feel queasy. Mom hits the brakes as the car in front of her stops to unload. It's a minivan with a billion kids of different ages. My school, Bayside Academy, is of the K-8 through variety, so siblings get stuck together for years. Mom uses the downtime to pull her brown hair into a ponytail and slap sunscreen on her arms. She's a landscape designer. Mostly, she works from home, but sometimes she has to go to client sites. Today is one of those days, and she can't be late. She stressed this several times before we left the house this morning. You're just nervous, honey. Once you get inside, you'll be fine. I give her the look of betrayal. Moms are supposed to want to care for their sick children. Mom tries to reason my fear away. It's simply your cortisol levels run awry, your fight-or-flight hormones going haywire, your anxiety making you think you feel sick. I don't think I feel sick. I do feel sick. You spent a lot of time on that speech and practiced for days and days. It's so good. You're going to be amazing. Mom uses her cheerleader voice, but her opinion doesn't count. She's my mom. She has to say stuff like that to me. We somehow manage to creep to the front of the car line in record time, and I start to panic. I really can't go through with this famous Californian presentation business.